It occurred in 2015 at a vocational high school in Nagakawa, Japan. That year, I graduated from middle school but failed to enter high school, so I enrolled in this vocational technical school to learn how to repair machines. Our school had just built a new and very spacious facility and the three of us lived together in a dormitory. The bond between the three of us was strong. On a weekend I played poker with a friend in the dorm, but if there were only two players it was a little sad so we were going to invite the other guy, Yoshi, to join us. However, because Yoshi was not in the dorm, we didn't have much fun playing most of the time. Yoshi was in fact very different from the rest of us. He had been accepted to a prestigious high school that year, but he chose this one instead. We noticed him staring at his phone that day with a blank face, so we crept up behind him. We all assumed Yoshi was in love, secretly chatting or watching a 18 plus movie at the time. But as we got closer, we noticed that he was staring at a photo on his phone and still had tears in his eyes. It was a picture of him with a short middle-aged man. It seemed to be his father. The two of them were standing beneath a stone wall and their smiles were especially warm in the photograph. We were surprised to see the situation, but we both assumed he was homesick. Do you miss home? The other friend inquired. I mocked him a few sentences, not with malice just to make him feel better. How old are you? Still crying? <laughs> but Yoshi still didn't say anything, and when he did, we were both taken aback. Today is the first death anniversary of my father. We recognized that teasing Yoshi was a mistake. Fortunately, Yoshi was not the type of person who was difficult to get along with, nor did he blame us. Rather, he freely told us his story. We also learned more about his father from the story Yoshi was about to tell. Yoshi's hometown was located in the mountainous region of Gifu province. Despite living in a poor rural area, Yoshi's family life was very good because his father had a unique profession. In addition to farm work, his father went to the mountains to collect medical herbs and the most difficult part was that he had to climb the sharp cliffs by tying a rope around his waist. Of course, this was extremely dangerous and the mountains there were high and steep and there were cliffs at the mountain's base. If you had fallen, you would certainly die. But taking these risks was worthwhile for Yoshi's father because the Salandine, a valuable medicinal herb, grew on the rock ledge. The Salandine was unknown to many people before, but in recent years, it had suddenly become extremely valuable because it could cure some rare diseases at the time and its price was rising. And because Yoshi's father risked his life to climb the cliffs, every time he could pick the Salandine, he would earn a large sum of money. As a result, the entire family's life was improved. He was very satisfied despite the fact that it was difficult and dangerous. However, he was very frugal, only using an old rope to climb up and down, which frequently worried Yoshi's mother because the old rope would be unstable. A year ago, the rope wrapped around the cliff and broke while he was taking medicines from the cliff. When the rope snapped, he lost the protection and fell off the cliff. Everything happened so quickly, he didn't have time to grasp anything. In fact, their family was very concerned about this herb picking job. The family has warned him numerous times not to continue because it was extremely dangerous. But he always laughed and encouraged Yoshi to work hard at school. It would cost money to get into university later, so he wouldn't do it until Yoshi graduated. Yoshi's tears welled up again as he said this time, the first time we saw a child blaming himself for being so good at studying. I turned around and ran outside after hearing Yoshi's story and seeing how sad he was remembering his father. Many people considered that I was a smart boy. Everyone knew that I always did things on purpose but could never guess what I was going to do next. After 4-5 or five minutes, I ran in from the outside, lit 3 cigarettes stolen from the house next door. Yoshi's tears were flowing again at this point. He was very emotional. Honestly, I was not sure if this was appropriate, but it was a tribute to Yoshi's father. We lit three cigarettes and placed them on the windowsill, bowing three times simultaneously. After all of this, we were well-connected friends. We had a good time again. 
In this way, even after the cigarette had been extinguished, the father and son's emotions were always kept in their hearts. But when we went to bed that night, we experienced something very strange. We all slept soundly that night, but in the middle of the night, I awoke, feeling extremely cold for no apparent reason. I awoke but couldn't move. I could only open my eyes. At this point I noticed a person standing in front of Yoshi's bed, a vague black shadow whose face couldn't be seen clearly, but I had a strong feeling that the person was his deceased father. The man sat on Yoshi's bed smoking a cigarette and still talking to him in his mouth. His voice was so deep that I could only faintly hear it. He admitted it was his fault and advised Yoshi to take good care of himself, his mother and to do well in school when he grew up. Yoshi was crying all the time, but he didn't wake up. Perhaps he was having a very sad dream. Yoshi's father remained bedside, talking to him. Then I fell asleep and when I woke, it was already dawn. Yoshi's eyes were very red after waking up, and the dark circles under his eyes were also very visible, possibly due to his dream last night, in which he cried all night. I asked him if he had a nightmare the night before, because I saw Yoshi cry a lot. I quickly remembered last night's incident and told Yoshi. Yoshi stated that he had a dream about his father last night in which he was smoking next to his bed. When he finished, the other boy couldn't help but be surprised. There truly had been a conversation between Yoshi and his father, and I was an eyewitness to it. That guy suddenly shouted, Look, there are actually some cigarette butts at the foot of Yoshi's bed! We had to know that none of the three people in our dorm could smoke and a strange feeling came over us. I couldn't help but recall the person I saw last night in Yoshi's dream in which Yoshi's father sat in this position and smoked. Yoshi's tears flowed again as he sat on the bed, reaching out his hand to touch where his father had sat, as if the warmth that his father had left behind remained. Don't worry dad, when I grow up, I'll take care of myself and mother, I'll be a strong man. This was a sacred event that I witnessed firsthand, and to be honest, I was not afraid in my heart I only had a warm feeling about Yoshi's father-son relationship. We all graduated, Yoshi was introduced to work by the school, and the salary was also good. I believed his father was also relieved.